Hi, this is Jeff Coronado on behalf of JCSE, and this is a session in Bridging the Gap. So Bridging the Gap is a series of structural engineering design tutorials that we created here at the office to assist our young engineers. Um, and by extension, it helps uh, young engineers who are still in school, uh, and, and maybe they might be in their last year or so, uh, they're trying to look for a head start on their structural engineering careers. We all know structural engineering is extremely competitive. There are very few positions available for the number of school graduates. So um, if you're looking to get a head start on, on understanding what you need to know uh, when you get started in industry, or if you've been in practice now for a year or two and you're still somewhat overwhelmed with all of the material that you're learning, uh, because of the gap of where school leaves off and where the industry expects you or what the industry expects you to know, uh, these, these tutorial sessions may help you. So, um, so with that, let's jump into the, the topic here that we're tackling today, uh, how to calculate rebar welding effective length. And you can see, um, the detail in particular is, it's, this is our internal detail, URM Chimney 2. Uh, so if you have related questions after you listen to this tutorial and there are questions that you might have uh, that are on related topics to this, you might want to search on our channel for URM Chimney 2 and you might find related uh, tutorials uh, to, to what we're covering here right now. So just kind of a heads up. Um, get all you can from the tutorial. Don't jump around. Um, this is uh, what we're trying to do here is kind of get you to think like a structural engineer. We're not just trying to give you a quick answer. We're trying to get you to think like a structural engineer. So the sooner you digest these tutorials, uh, the sooner you're going to find yourself not needing to be uh, looking at tutorials, if you will. Um, so the idea here is to bolster your thinking, not just give you a quick answer. So don't shortchange the tutorial and the educational process from it. Um, with that in mind, let's jump here. Let's jump in here. All reinforcing steel to be welded needs to be uh, ASTM A706. Here in our office, we specify at JCSE we specify. A706 grade 60. The important thing is it needs to be A706. So not all rebar is weldable. Okay, that's the important thing there. So if you are re, uh, welding rebar, you want to make sure that you are specifying somewhere in your project that it is A706 steel. Now let's look at an elevation of what we've got here. So we are anchoring a brick chimney and we are anchoring it into roof, uh, into lumber framing. So we've got our brick chimney is out here. I mean that last little circle. There's our brick chimney. And in uh, yellow, let me show you our wood framing, right? So there's wood framing on the left. There's the brick chimney on the right. The brick chimney wants to pull away. All right, there's... Uh, Likely we're dealing with seismic forces and this whole brick mass wants to pull away from the, from the wood framing. So we need to anchor it. We need to pull that force back. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing with this connection here. Right, we're trying to provide a connection, a tensile connection that'll keep that chimney from pulling away. Uh, let me clear this, uh, let me clear this. So you can see here that we do have, uh, I'm sorry, this is not unreinforced. This is for a case where we do have steel reinforcement in the chimney. So it is a brick chimney, um, but we don't, uh, we, we, st well, we still need to anchor it into the framing. So what we want to do is um, anchor that, that uh, or grab that rebar and pull it into the wood framing so that we can achieve the anchoring that we're looking for. So this red, this red uh, line that I'm drawing here is basically over a steel strap. So we've got a steel strap and on that strap, let me use yellow here, we're gonna weld, well, we're gonna weld a piece of steel reinforcement that connects the chimney to that steel strap. Our weld specification 
is um, this symbol here, okay? Uh, this particular weld and how it works is covered in another tutorial session. So if you have questions about that, and if, for that matter, if you have questions on anything, at the end of this tutorial, by all means, leave us a note uh, at the end of the tutorial and we'll either try to point you in the right direction of the uh, tutorial that does cover the, the specific question that you might have, uh, or we'll just try to direct you in the right direction there. Um, but uh, as far as the, the symbols involved with the weld um, and capacities that we cover in another tutorial here, we're just trying to ascertain the, the effective length and, and understanding that concept. So, um, here is our dowel that we've been talking about. That's the dowel, that's the steel dowel that we are gonna weld to the steel strap. All right, so keep this in mind. We're gonna clear the screen and move on to a section, if you will. So if we were to draw, if we were to cut a section right here and look this way, all right, then what we would see would be something like this. All right, so here is our wood structural panel. Um, here is that block that we're connecting the steel strap to. So here's that steel strap and the black circle is the rebar, okay? So the purple is the sheathing, the red is the, the four by block. The, and again, if there's any terms that I use here, let me know at the end of this session and we'll point you to the tutorials that cover the specifics of what you're asking for. Uh, the gold arrow is pointing to the steel strap and the orange arrow is pointing to the rebar. So let me zero, let me clear this and zero in a little bit because we do kind of need to get in here a little bit. You can see, you can see in green, and so let me use a green arrow here. Right here and right here is the weld that's the weld material that connects the rebar to the steel plate. All right, so those are the elements that we have in this connection. So let me clear out of that and let me zoom out a little bit so that we are not gonna get dizzy here. Um, so let's go back to an elevation of this. Um, so let me start again. We have the wood structural panel sheathing right here. The block, the four by block is this element. And uh, highlight it. It's this element here. That's the four by block. Uh, we've got, I forget if these are roof rafters or ceiling joists. And again, if you have problems with the terminology, let me know afterwards and um, and we'll try to point you in the right direction. Um, not really sure if we specified. You know what? Let me take a look. Hold on. Uh, oh, this looks like roof framing. Okay. So these are roof rafters. These are roof rafters. Um, And uh, okay, so we've got uh, roof rafters right here and right here. The steel plate is this element that I'm pointing to here. So that would be basically all of this, right? All of that is the steel plate, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the rebar, the rebar is this element. Um, so let's see here. 
So that's all of this, right? That's the rebar. And let me let me um, clear this and let me zoom in a little bit or a lot of bit. Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna have to clear the screen on you guys, sorry. But I do want you to see, because this is the crux of the matter, right? Um, what I want you to notice is in green, all right, in green, we have the weld. Now, remember that we had specified, and if you don't, and you don't trust me, and you don't take my word for it, that's okay, that won't hurt my feelings. Let me take you back here. Here, we specified the weld length. We specified that weld to be six inches long. Okay, now you believe me? All right, so we've got a six inch long weld. That means that, that means that from here to here, this dimension here, all right, that dimension there is six inches because that's what we specified, right? A six inch long weld. But look closely. Notice how we didn't draw the weld the same along the six inches. In fact, notice how this is drawn differently and this is drawn. Let me do that a little bit better for you guys. And this is drawn differently from the rest. So this is different and this is different. This is one inch. This is one inch. The reason why we're alerting you to this is because when the welder starts welding, the material that he that they first deposit is not going to be the same quality weld material that's deposited in the body of the weld. So we kind of take off arbitrarily, we kind of take off about one inch to account for that. You can't always do that. Sometimes there's a problem with that. Sometimes the weld is so tight that we just got to, we got to bank that, that the entire weld length is going to be effective. Um, but if at all possible, uh, we, we don't count on our calculations on that first inch of weld and the last inch of effective of weld for our effective length. So for purposes, so even though we specify six inches, for purposes of calculations, we would take a weld length that would be what we're showing right here. It would be the weld length that we've specified L minus one inch at the beginning, minus one inch at the back end. In essence, L minus two. And for calculations, that's what we would use for our effective length for this weld. Okay, so that's kind of the, the crux of the trick here when determining the weld length um, don't uh, just kind of assume that you're going to have uh, uh, the entire length that you specify is, is going to be good weld. The reality is it's not going to be good weld. You have to take off a little bit or you should. You should uh, take off a little bit at the beginning and a little bit at the end uh, and then just kind of count on the in-between portion of the weld that you're specifying. All right, so with that in mind, let me clear the screen. Let me make sure that we've covered everything. Zoom out. <clears throat> and yes, that's everything. So that's the effective length of a weld. So if this was helpful to you, sure would appreciate you giving us a thumbs up. Um, if, uh, if you have any comments or suggestions on how we can improve these tutorial sessions for you, um, by all means, let us know and we'll try to, we'll try to kind of work with what you're suggesting. <clears throat> excuse me and uh and if this was helpful to you by all means join the the channel subscribe to the channel subscribe to the jcse channel on youtube and um and that way you'll be notified automatically of um of uh tutorials as we post them structural engineering design tutorials as we post them okay all right real good guys thanks